Hello viewers, um, my name is Kevin Young with Serpentarium Surplus and Moonlight Mantids and today I want to make a little video about uh, giant shield mantids, um, the genus Rhombodera. Um, they're a fairly available species, very popular, very e pretty easy to keep. Um, I, I've been keeping them for a while and I uh, got some, some good advice for you guys so we can uh, talk about them just a little bit and give you some uh, tips and tricks to help uh, keep them. Uh, their distribution naturally ranges from Malaysia to Southeast Asia. Um, when you're keeping them, your temperatures are going to range from 72 to 78 degrees on the cooler side. And that's probably where you're going to keep your males if you plan on breeding them, just to kind of slow them down. That's also a good trick for if you're going to keep them as a pet, just going to kind of stretch out their longevity a little bit. On the warmer side, about 78 to 84 degrees for, say, your females if you're going to, be do, if you're going to do any breeding. Um, it's not a bad idea. Humidity, you want to keep these species at about 60%. You can accomplish this with one or two mistings a day. Uh, maybe some moist substrate in the bottom of whatever container you have them in. Um, hydration with this species is key. They like to drink a lot of water. Um, you're going to need larger caging because it's a larger mantis. They reach about 4 to 5 inches there and they, they have some girth to them. Um, you could start them out in a 32 ounce cup just like this, you know about L2 to about L3 or 4 and this will work just fine. Um, from there you can move on to large plastic jars just like that and that will pretty much serve them their whole life um, if you want to go like thrifty way. Um, otherwise you can use screen cages or exoterras, vivariums, whatever you want to do it's, it's up to you. Um, uh, it's possible to approximate their gender fairly early uh, most people can do it at about an L2, and L3 is a pretty sure thing. Uh, females, of course, have six segments. Male, males are going to have about eight. Um, after they hatch, it, you're going to see their first shed about seven to nine days after that, and then every two weeks until they're about an L5, and then they're going to slow down just a little bit um, after that until they get to adulthood. Um, you're going to wait about two to four weeks before you start breeding this species. Um, just to uh, let them uh, you know, fatten up and, uh, and uh, become interested in mating, I guess. I don't know. I'm missing the word right now. What is it? Become receptive. There you go. Uh, after that, oh, you're, they're going to have about four to six ooth. Um, and if you guys have done any breeding at all, basically you want to make sure you remate your females after about two ooth, two to three ooth. Three ooth's okay, but you're gonna start losing uh, fertility after about uh, three there for sure. Um, so you're gonna make sure you can hold on to your males, feed them back up, take good care of them. Hopefully you have spare males. Um, you wanna keep up fertility, so you're gonna mate, uh, remate your mantids every two to three ooth. Um, the ooth hatch in about four to six weeks um, uh, of incubation, and you wanna keep those about mid 70s at the lowest, mid 80s right in there. Um, same possible humidity. We're going to go to about 60% humidity on that one. Um, you're going to get about 100 to 150 nymphs. The problem with this species um, that I've heard about um, is that they, because of the large numbers, and I didn't mention this in my ooth care video um, because I haven't had this issue before, but uh, when they hatch and you have them in here with say like a cloth lid and you're incubating them, um, they can overcrowd this little area and that can be re really stressful and with any hatch you're going to have some die-offs. Um, you can increase that drastically if the container is too small and they spend too much time in here. So it's not a bad idea to go with something a little bit bigger if you can. Um, make sure you keep them humid and you got to watch that overcrowding and stressing and you want to get them separated out fairly quickly after they dry out. But um, for a large ooth and their ooth get about an inch and a half minimum. This is a shield ooth right here. It's a fairly good size. There could be way more than 150. It could be two, 300. Um, it really, it just depends. Um, all of the shield mantises from that genus, um, they're basically pretty much the same. Some are a little bigger, some are a little bit smaller, maybe slightly different color patterning. Um, they're not too diverse. Oh, let's see. Uh, the biggest danger and the most common issue with this species is mist malts. They're a larger species. You're going to have to keep them in larger containers. Um, got to make sure you give them the right kind of um, 
shedding surfaces that they can hang on to because they're they're bigger. You're not going to use like nylon or anything for that. You're going to use um, I like to use like um, what's that called? Uh, fiberglass mesh. It's not metal, um, and that that's better. Um, a lot of people use like cloth and different things. I mean, it just it really just kind of depends because they're larger species. I use larger material. Um, the uh, fiberglass mesh you can buy anywhere works pretty good for me. I've been keeping them a little while, and I have energy problems that way. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little tour right now. Please don't get mad. It's going to be... Um, i got to pick this thing up, and i got to walk around and try to record for you guys. So let me just try it. All right, here we go. Um, I did, actually, um, one thing I like to do, and it's a little bit uh, um, strange and... Uh, I don't know if most people like it or not, but I like to keep my dead mantids. Um, I'll either pin them, which I'm getting really good at because I don't like to waste them when they die of old age. Uh, here's another shot of the ooth right there, about an inch and a half there, and that's just a, that's a decent size one. They can be a little bigger, a little smaller, um, and based on that, that's how many nymphs you're going to get. If they're a little bit bigger, you might get more. A little bit smaller, you might get less. Um, but uh, I like to keep my mantids, and uh, sometimes I put them in alcohol. That is a very large female. She's about uh, four and a half inches. Um, that's a pretty good size. When they get a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, it just really depends, and that on gender. Um, let me see here. I got a few already eating. See right there. There's my little guy. Nice little female. She's just kind of chowing down. She's got a cricket or a roach or something. She's just enjoying herself. That uh, There's that... Um, Fiberglass screening I was talking about, really pliable. Um, sitting on a jar, that's a good cage right there. You can use these here, 32 ounce cups with the mesh lids for about uh, two or three sheds. It really is just up to you. Um, you're gonna know when that's when they're uh, a little bit uh, too big for their caging. Really nice shield there. They're just beautiful. Sometimes you get those little bit of blues, those bright flash greens. They're known as uh, Leafy mantis, or um, you know, shield mantis, or um, sometimes they're called hooded mantids, but I think that's incorrect because there's an actual hooded mantis species out there with a much larger hood. But um, when you look up the genus name, it gives you all those little common names. Um, best to go just by the scientific name if you can remember it. Let me see if I can't try to feed this guy for you. Try to get him. Oh, oh, and he's got it. There you go. Finish him off. Ooh, yeah, they're great. Really cannibalistic towards each other. Um, you cannot keep these together. That also creates uh, somewhat of a breeding problem. They can be a little bit tricky to breed for that reason. Uh, they don't like each other's company a lot. Really, really, really voracious appetites. Um, let me take you around here while she snacks on that. Um, see here, I like to use exoterras. Um, exoterras are great. They don't have to be built up like this vivarium here. But um, I like to use them once in a while. They're nice and planted, and it's, it's, it's beneficial. Keeps humidity in. Um, let's see here. I got one feeding right there. I hope you can see it. She's got some food. You can uh, mix it up just like this. It's not going to hurt it any. They're going to love this. Um, I have great success with these uh, vivariums, which are just planted tanks. Um, they're pretty popular. I know a lot of people can uh, use them. They're a little bit expensive though. Um, here we have another, this is just a screen cage. It's got the UVB on top. Uh, lighting's not really required for mantids. I do like to use UVB if I can. Um, it adds just a little bit of warmth and uh, natural rays. I don't think it's going to hurt any. Maybe builds a stronger exoskeleton. I don't know. And by the way, you can dust your crickets, roaches, whatever you use. Hopefully not crickets, at least not very much. So you have one here. I also like to use um, live plants. You can use plastic if you want. I feel like the uh, live plants are a little more grippy. Hello, how's it going? Sitting really flat there. She really likes hanging out on these uh, nice aeroids here. One of my favorite plants to keep. Yeah, she's just beautiful. Uh, pretty easy to tell the gender on these things. Uh, you just count your segments. And you can wait till they're a little bit bigger. Hopefully you uh, got enough of them together if you're going to do any breeding, especially males. Um, definitely not communal. Please don't try it. 
if you plan on keeping more than one alive. All right, let me just set this back up, and I will try to talk to you guys a little bit more. Hello. All right, um, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, shields are one of my all-time favorites. Uh, they're pretty easy to take care of. Uh, I wanted to thank you guys for watching again. If you have any more questions, stories, of course, we got our art contest still, which I already have a few entries. Um, you go ahead and keep sending them in. Don't worry, it's not going to stop. Uh, you'll get a free Mantis you're choosing, free Mantis starter kit. That's always cool, especially if you're looking at getting into them. Um, you know, just uh, so if you want to learn about any species specifically, I got a lot of friends with a lot of different species. I would not mind taking on a new project, but I have a lot of different mantids here already. This is one of two rooms I have packed with a lot of things, and I can do more. Um, we're not doing just mantids. We're going to do things like assassins, scorpions, maybe some nice teas, just a little bit. I'm not a tarantula expert, but I know a lot of people that have them. Um, a lot of feeder insects. I do also reproduce roaches. I love roaches. I love them. I have, they're great feeders. So you just, you, you can never not use a roach, especially if you're keeping mantids. I have 53 species currently. I've probably worked with like 60 of them. So if there's a special feeder you want me to do or a special pet insect or any mantids you can think of, just send me a request and I'll get the video. Uh, I'll get it read up for you, all the best information I can get. Uh, I did have some help with this from a couple friends of mine, uh, Pat O'Toole. Um, my friend Billy and uh, uh, a couple other friends I had help with. I can't I can't think of their names. This is terrible. I'm not a really good friend. <laughs> um, anyway, for if you want the latest tips and tricks on our insect hobby, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.